Welcome back. Today's headlines of Chemcon TV's news bulletin are Chemcon Asia 2024's welcome reception, an interview with industry experts on KREIT's implementation experiences, a statement on the Shanghai QR code policy requirements, and our local reporter Michael shows us Chinatown. But to start with, some takeaways from yesterday's workshop and in-depth seminars. So this morning we had an early start uh, on the topic of interacting with regulators and we heard from a whole range of uh, regulators, uh, starting with ECHA, who gave a very comprehensive overview of their consultation uh, or their, yeah, their consultation process. Um, we also heard from uh, ACIS uh, that has a fairly structured approach as well. Um, and then it went on, uh, we heard from uh, Vietnam and from Thai agencies on their approach, which was uh, you know, a little uh, more dynamic in nature. And I think this really reflects the complexity of regulations um, and the need to uh, create more structured approaches as the regulations become more complex. Um, but that the dynamic uh, type of uh, uh, consultation was also useful uh, and definitely evolving uh, in that space. So overall, uh, an interesting session hearing um, the wide variety of consultation processes and systems that are in place or not in place um, and the need to do more of that uh, going forward and for industry and uh, for the regulators to really work hand in hand trying to understand each other, uh, build trust, um, work towards workable uh, solutions uh, and meet the objectives for both parties uh, in the process of, of um, enacting the regulation and complying with the regulations. This morning's session was about enforcement and um, compliance across the globe. Uh, we had um, a lot of speakers uh, from Asia uh, reflecting on on the heterogeneity of um, regulatory systems um, across this region. Um, what we're seeing is that um, the challenges um, are um, manifold and more, more complex than in Europe. Um, the enforcers here and also industry are struggling with the fact that uh, customs um, and enforcers are requesting more and more information. Uh, um, from industry, uh, such as exact product uh, composition details. And what was very clear at the end of the session was that uh, across Asia, there is a very, very um, strong demand for harmonization in order to um, deal with a lot of uh, compliance issues. After the sound bites from yesterday's seminars, let's connect with our local reporter to learn more about Thai music. This is a Thai Renan, and it's a type of xylophone and part of the magic of music. I haven't played one of these in over 25 years, and needless to say, I'm pretty terrible at it. Luckily, we have someone here who's amazing at it, and I'd like to show you what it should sound like. This is a Chantri from the Luang Pradit Pai Ra Foundation, and he's going to show you how it's supposed to be done. Beautiful. What other Thai instruments are popular? Well, there's actually a whole toolbox of Thai instruments, including the saw and the hammer dulcimer, otherwise known as the kim, which Sai Rung here happens to be super proficient at. Take it away.
during yesterday's welcome reception, I believe your delegates also got a chance to appreciate some Thai music. Let's take a look at some clips. Hopefully they also enjoyed the stunning views of beautiful Bangkok. Yes, we were very fortunate yesterday. Here is a fortune themed gift set for you of three elephants. Oh, this is an easy one. More music in the interview I had with Da Hae Kim and June Lee on K-Reach implementation. The practical implementation of KBPR, K-OSHA and K-Reach and other chemical regulations in Korea. That's a learning process for both industry and also for authorities. If you, one of you or both of you as a team could coach them, what suggestions for improvement would you have? I think exchanging between industry and the authority is very important. So I think industry has to share their experiences and lesson learned to the authority and also authority should hear some opinions from industry so we have to improve the implementation of the regulation. And June, if you would coach them? Yep. If I would, then <laughs> we need to act faster uh, and then take measures as early as possible. So, I mean, this, for example, the ChemCon is a great opportunity for us to learn how other jurisdictions are actually implementing uh, these chemical regulations in advance, right? So the government, also the companies, and also lessons from the 2021 uh, registration, you need more time to prepare and then apply for registration. And there's gonna be lots of steps in the process. Uh, definitely, we'll, we'll definitely need to uh, get go ahead and then uh, start preparing this, at least the upcoming 2024 deadline. You can watch the complete interview on our YouTube channel. After this interview in Korea, let's return to Michael in... Chinatown. These elephants represent fortune. And Chinatown, or Yawarad, is well known for its fortune tellers and gold. I'm here at the Langboi Ia Shrine in Chinatown. This shrine was built over 300 years ago, back in the Ayutthaya period. Now, the shrine is also very popular among local businessmen who come here to pray for prosperity. That's a very beautiful shrine. What else is Chinatown known for, Michael? Food. Chinatown is home to anything and everything you could possibly want to eat. What's this? I don't know, but it smells great. Yawarat is one of the street food destinations to visit in Bangkok. But how do you know if something's good? Well, there's a very simple life hack for you. If there's a big line in front of the street food vendor, it's good. Oh, I'm stuffed. Thank you for this insight into Chinatown customs. Tomorrow, more Thailand stories. Here again is another great elephant gift set. Please focus on the artwork on the yellow elephant. Well, these are really nice. You know, I think I recognize the pictures on this elephant. I'd say after this morning's jam session, Maybe it's time to cover a slightly sadder type of jam that Bangkok's known for, and that's its traffic jams. More from Michael in the next episode of What's What in a What? But first more on China in today's statement of the day. And I'm happy to have in our studio Karen Xu from Merck. Karen, when you travel, do you like visiting Chinatowns? I travel, not really. <laughs> I think I like to, to visit some, uh, to see something special in those countries, not Chinese culture. Okay. 
can you tell us a little bit more about Shanghai's pilot project on the Hescam traceability code? Okay. Uh, Generally speaking, today we are in the digital age. Uh, the authority also tried to uh, introduce digital uh, strategies into hazardous chemical management. The Shanghai policy requires the company to assign a QR code to hazardous chemicals. By scanning this kind of QR code, the product can be tracked and managed uh, throughout the entire life cycle. This might, be, uh, might help the authority uh, to improve management. It may also uh, to ensure, uh, to help to ensure the uh, accountability and transparency in sub supply chain. General, uh, general speaking, I would like to say it's a good uh, approach. However, the industry, we are still facing a lot of challenges. For example, we need to calculate the cost issue, manpower issue, supply chain lead time issue, and how to um, protect the business confidential information, how to coordinate with the supply chain, the stakeholders in supply chain is still a challenge for us. So a lot of lessons learned from this pilot. And what is your statement? It would be good to implement lessons learned from the pilot project. Karen, thank you very much. It's an honor to have you with us this week. As promised, we now go to Michael to learn more about what's what in a what. This is one of the two types of important trees that you might find in a Tai Wat. This is called the Bodhi tree, and it's the same kind of tree that Buddha achieved enlightenment sitting underneath. Thai people are very reverent of this kind of tree, and you'll often see colored cloths or offerings placed in front of the tree. Thai people also believe that if you fall to sleep beside one of these trees, you'll get a very good night's rest. This is the other important tree that you might see in a Tai Wat. Now this is called a Sal tree, and it's the same type of tree that Buddha was born under. The Sal tree is also known as the cannonball tree because its fruit look and feel like a cannonball. Now I'm in a public park, so I can't pick these, but if you get your hands on one and you manage to break it open, the white flesh will oxidize into a turquoise as soon as you break it apart. Good luck. Once again, very informative. Also, today's program is packed with information. We start with China. Before we look at various aspects of chemical control legislation in Korea, K-REACH, K-OSHA and K-BPR. In the afternoon, we turn our spotlight on Europe with the latest news on EU's chemical strategy for sustainability, including the recently proposed essential use criteria. Furthermore, REACH authorization and restriction and risk management measures. Thank you for watching and enjoy your day.